Welcome back, everyone, to Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth 2. Oh my god, I'm sorry that I left it on such like a weird... Just, I, I had a lot of emotion at once. We figured out something that I kind of called early, and I'm a little sad that I ended up calling that, but... Uh, we've just found out that I believe John Marsh is the son of the president of Zangwill. He's his father. I... <sighs> now it's all starting to make sense, isn't it? Did she say... John? Courtney. I'll be waiting in the courtyard of the orphanage at midnight on February 9th. Even if it's just once, I want John to be able to meet you. I'm sorry if I'm being selfish, but... I'll be waiting. Thing is, though, is the person on the tape said their name was Amy. No way. That was my... John! Which makes me think that maybe Courtney is not John's actual mother. What's the meaning of this? Miss Courtney. John is not my biological son. I thought so. He's adopted. Did John know about this? Of course he knew. John's mother, Amy Marsh, passed away about five years ago. She and I were cousins. Oh, I see. Since we were young, we've always been really close. We were often mistaken for sisters. That's why, when she passed away, I thought it was only natural that I look after John. Also, there were circumstances which prevented me from revealing his father's identity. Yeah, I can guess that there were probably a few. I never even told John his father's name. Oh, so he's hearing that for the first time now? Oh my god. And now it's all been revealed. Thanks to the recording on that doll. Did John's mother send the doll to the president? John, you're right. Hey. John? Was he... Was he the... The president? Was he really my dad? Yes, he was. Before you were born, Amy worked as a diplomat in Zengfa. A diplomat? So that must be how she became acquainted with President Huang. Hang on. Didn't you tell me she worked at the orphanage? Yes. After returning to this country, Amy left her job as a diplomat. She always had great passion for charity work, so she began working at the orphanage. I see. Wait, what? Wait a minute, we're having a moment! Hey, Miss Courtney. So this Amy girl, she called the president there herself, but... She never showed up at the scene of the SS5 incident. What's with that? Amy... Couldn't make it. Apparently someone had been following her the whole night. Perhaps it was Blaze. I can't say for certain, but it's possible that it was his doing. After that, Amy never got another chance to see the president again. So, she died five years ago. This conversation must be painful for John. Oh, right. Hey, John, you thirsty? How about I buy us both some juice? We can go together. Oh, okay, so sweet. She's trying to take him out of the situation for a little bit. Oh, part of this too. I'll listen until the end. Besides, I can afford to buy my own juice. Oh, shot down by a kid. Oh, uh, it's all right, Kay. You tried. That's the important part. John, do you understand the reason I met with the president two days ago? A secret meeting from two nights ago. I wanted to tell him about Amy's death and that you were alive and well. But... I... Wait, so he didn't know the president himself didn't know until recently? I guess not. I see. That's why you couldn't tell us your reasons for meeting with the president until now. I get it. She would have had to reveal his connection with John. I brought a bouquet of lion lilies so that he would understand that I truly did know about Amy. Those flowers are a dear memory to the president and Amy. 
The first present she received from the president was a bouquet of lion lilies. But now, even he has passed away. If only he were still alive. Perhaps I could have introduced him to John. I'm sorry, little dude. Oh man, that's so much! Shifu? I'm sorry to interrupt this atmosphere, but there's something I need to say. And that dude has been trying to say something for the last two episodes, boy! What is it now? Can it wait? Well, actually, there's one last item that's been delivered here from Zangfa. I have here the President's will. Well, what? Yeah, that's kind of important, I would say. The President's will. My old man received a great number of special medals from the President himself. As a token of his trust, the President left his will in the protection of the Lang clan. Right? Those medals in that will... They were the pride of our clan. Our family treasures, so to speak. Right, okay. And there it is. <laughs> Alright, well, what does it say? Th this is... Agent Lang, does that will have something to do with the current case? You bet it does. It, it says here... I hereby acknowledge John Marsh as my own son. What? What? John's name is in the president's will. Are you certain that will was written by the president? Yeah, he entrusted it to the Lang Clan even before the SS5 incident took place. They'll have to appraise it back home, but by the name of the Lang Clan, this is the real deal. Ki Jung Hong was the president of an entire nation. The existence of his son would have caused considerable controversy. However, he left behind a will just in case. This makes it doubly sure. I still can't believe it myself, but there's no room for doubt. Don Marsh, you are the son of Di Jung Huang, president of Zhangfa. Holy crap, what's he gonna do? I love how Gumshoe just was like, what? <laughs> what does that mean? John! Oh boy. Oh, he ran off. Oh no. Boy, this has been the case of boys running off, has it not? John, go after him, Edgeworth. Surely we can fix this. Oh, to be. Oh, I should have left this on the last one. My bad. That does happen. That's okay. That's okay. We'll keep going. I am determined to get this over in two episodes, even if the last one has to be ultra long. I'm here for it, because that's what we usually do. All right. No, 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 no. You never save in an active LP. No. All right, here we go. Oh my God, the poor kid. That's a, that's a lot. That's a lot to take in. I'll tell you that right now. And as someone that has adopted myself, I can tell you that that's a lot to take in. All right, you're all right. We've got to help him. John. So that guy was my dad? He found out about his own birth so suddenly. And furthermore, his newfound father is no longer in this world. I'd always been searching for my dad. John. I, I get it, alright? He's the president. I, I know it's a complicated situation. But we haven't met face to face during the filming. So then why, huh? Why didn't he tell me who he really was? I'm sorry, John. Oh, look at her hugging him. Aww. Mom. You don't need to apologize, no matter how you look at it. It's all my fault. Oh, he calls her mom and everything, even though he knows. Oh, look at him. Yesterday, I broke my promise with you, and I didn't even notice the fire on the roof. So I destroyed everything. I crushed it all. My dad, and those flowers that my mom carefully grew. John! Please, by now, just don't think about anything. Just stay like this for a little while. Just for a little while, okay? Poor Courtney. The bond between a parent and child. That's the meaning behind Lion Lilies. I know it's not my style, but that flower is from Zangfa. However, we have no means of protecting that bond. Agent Lang, allow me to say this. The case won't be solved by sentimentality alone. Therefore, shouldn't we do all that we can to solve it? Yeah, you're right. The recreation of the past is finished. 
We have father's deductions, correct. My old man took his deductions to the grave. He never told anyone about them. So who knows if they were right or not? Oh, so he didn't even discuss them. In that case, what about your own deductions? I would like to hear what you think happened based on the recreation. In order for us to get close to the truth of 12 years ago. Yeah, I was thinking it's about time. What are we doing? <gasps> Is we taking Lane to get Lane? Oh wait, it's probably just, it's probably, oh, it's probably testimony though. It's not gay chess land, right? It wouldn't be under these circumstances, I don't think. Oh man. I can see it now, my old man back real close. I'll catch up to him for sure. To the truth that my old man uncovered. It's gotta be, yeah, okay, it's testimony. God damn it. Well, if I wanted to bring him. You know I wanted to bring his ass to gay chess land? Come on, I'm here for it. <laughs> All right, fine. So, the truth of the SS5 incident. So, I guess we're just going back and forth with some ideas. So, let's see what we have. There's no mistake that the president went to the orphanage. Stuffed toy is proof of that. He was planning to meet with Amy Marsh. However, the president was kidnapped, and Cameron just happened to witness it. If Cameron hadn't been there, it probably would have just been a kidnapping with no murder. Afterwards, the body was moved to the flower beds and a fake photo was taken. Hmm. Was that really what happened 12 years ago? There was a couple of things there that, that stood out to me. I'm not sure. SS5 incident files. President was kidnapped and a witness was killed. Ch touch check button. Uh, I probably want to look at that. However, there's one thing I don't get. Something you don't get. It's this. Why do they need to take a fake photo? Why would they go through all that trouble and even make the president take part in it? Hmm. That's true. However, the answer to that riddle must lie somewhere within. Once we get past the layers upon layers of deductions, we shall surely reach it. Yeah, that's right. I'd like to hear your deductions as well. Alright, let's do it. So let's press everything. Um, let me look quickly at these files because I just want to make sure that, like, I've got everything in here. Where are they? Did we- I don't think we looked at them exactly yet. Okay, the president of Zengfa, Di Zhonghuang, was kidnapped on February 10th, 12 years ago. The kidnappers demanded a ransom of $100 million. Dai Longling confirmed that on the evening of the incident, the president was at the Zengfa embassy until midnight. Prosecutor blazed the best suspect, Patricia Rowland. The president had an appointment at midnight in the courtyard of the orphanage to meet with Amy Marsh. Jack Cameron was a witness. His body seems to have been moved and a fake photo was taken. Okay, so that's basically what we know. All right, let's do it. The truth of the incident. There's no mistake that the president went to the orphanage. I agree with that. I don't even want to press it, but I'm going to, because you just never know. Agent Lang, I'd like to verify a few things that may have seemed obvious at first glance. Are we certain that the president actually went to the orphanage? Okay, I get it. You're saying you want proof? Everyone's always demanding proof from Mr. Edgeworth, after all. You didn't have to tell him that. The stuffed toy is proof of that. He was planning to meet with Amy Marsh. Okay. You mean this stuffed animal? The one with the recording device? That's right. Inside that toy was a recording from John's birth mother, Amy Marsh. Indeed. She said that she would meet with him at midnight. So we're basically, I think we're basically saying at this point that that's fact. Wow, you two are perfectly in sync. <laughs> Good. That's how I like it. The truth is becoming clear, like you're peeling off the layers of a scallion. Okay, a scallion doesn't have anything on the inside. <laughs> Please don't make such foreboding analogies. Oh, that's gonna get screenshotted for some reason that I don't want to mention why, but it's going to. Uh, with, with part of the word cut off. Oh. The truth is becoming clear, like- oh, this is also going to get- mm-hmm. Like you're peeling off the skin of a wolf. C can you stop making those foreboding analogies? Haha, <laughs> they said the same thing. <clears throat> Let's get back on track. Alright, however, the president was kidnapped and Cameron just happened to witness it. Did he just happen to witness it? I guess that's my only question at this point. Well, not my only one, but for right now. I'd also like to verify the details of this point as much as possible. Mr. Cameron witnessed the president and his kidnapper near the orphanage. And Mr. Cameron was standing by the snowman near the road. 
And the murder picked up the bricks, struck him on the back, and blah, 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 blah. I can't read. Okay, and wham. With the 80s band. Huh. Okay, we are simply verifying what actually transpired. There's no need to be scared. What? That was so intense! Half the details of this case just vanished from my brain. So that happens to me every time I stop the recording. Mr. Edgeworth, Mr. Lang, let's carefully verify all the facts of the case. Probably have to press everything here if I if I had to guess. Ugh. Well, if you're gonna listen, I'll talk as much as you want. Girl, I'm here to listen to you all day. If Cameron hadn't been there, it probably would have just been a kidnapping. Wait a minute now, wait! This statement! If Cameron hadn't been there, it probably would have just been a kidnapping with no murder. Hang on, do we have something? This! We still haven't figured out whose blood this is. Somebody else that night was hurt, if not murdered. Is this what I have to present? I'm doing it. Oh my... Mmm. Thank God I'm recording these back to back and I remembered. I don't think I would have remembered that. If the eyewitness Cameron had not been there, no murder would have taken place? Is that really the case? Yeah, clearly something else happened. The criminal's goal was only to kidnap the president. There are no witnesses. There would have been no need to commit murder, right? And what if Cameron wasn't the only one who was murdered? Oh no, I'm worried about this. There was a large blood stain near the flower beds. However, Cameron was murdered. Near the snowman. Ergo, this blood stain could not have belonged to Cameron. Someone else's blood was spilled, and quite a vast amount at that. So we're probably going with whoever that was, was gravely injured, if not fatally. But who was it? Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. Do you have any idea what you're saying? I do. It's hard to believe, however. That's what the evidence indicates. On that night, 12 years ago, there were two murders. Are you saying that the other murder was covered up? Who... Who just... Who the heck could have been killed? I'm worried about this. Murder that was cleverly concealed. All traces of it were erased. And the incident itself was completely deleted from the case files. However, there's one thing. One piece of evidence that still remains intact after 12 years. This piece of evidence shows that something happened that night. Huh? Evidence shows that something happened that night. <gasps> it's this, isn't it? It's this. Uh, oh my god. Oh my god. Sorry, I got a little... <laughs> I was just in shock. The other murder incident was buried in the dark by Blaze de Best. However, there is still one piece of evidence that remains. Agent Lang, it survived by your father's hands. My old man, you say? Please recall. There was one more thing that was hidden along with the traces of the murder. And that is the existence of the boy who caused the fire. Why did Blaze make the boy disappear? It's because he saw something that he wasn't supposed to see. So it was the boy that got killed. What was the thing he wasn't supposed to see? Everything is drawn in this picture. The drawing my old man had. The person drawn on the right is most likely the president. The Mozilla doll is also drawn near him. And the person standing opposite him is Serendosian. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe that after all this time, this is where we are. This is- this is unbelievable! Take that. This is incredible! A man with a knife and a large black dog. He is none other than Siren Dojin. What? The assassin? Why would an assassin appear before president? The answer is clear. Indeed, what occurred that night on the orphanage grounds 12 years ago was not a kidnapping. It was a presidential assassination. <gasps> ba -ba -ba -ba. Here we go. Ho I don't know. Oh, look at this. Then, Miss Roland and Mr. Blaze were... Yes, 
The two were likely partners in crime. Oh, God, look at them. One furnished the orphanage to use as the scene of the incident, and the other covered up the young boy's testimony. It's likely that Mr. Cameron was murdered because he witnessed the assassination itself. After all, the kidnapping never actually happened. Stop messing around. You're saying that the president was assassinated 12 years ago? We just found his body today. He's been alive up until now. That's right. I, I mean, we met him ourselves. If the president was assassinated 12 years ago and the president's body was found today, that would imply that there were two president... What? Yeah, and that can't be right. Are you sure about that? There is the possibility that there were two presidents. What are you talking about, Miles? That's right. Up until now, I've been getting a strange feeling from the president. I guess my question was... Uh, the thing is, I'm trying to remember much about him the first time we met him, and it was so long ago now that I'm having trouble remembering. Even so, I still respect the man. Seng Fa is a small country, but he carried the nation with his strength. The image of, a, of President Huang that Agent Lang described. You, you're wrong. Art. <gasps> Wait a minute, this isn't gonna be a Dang and Rampa 2 thing, is it? This isn't gonna be a, a, a Biakia thing, is it? The fat Biakia thing. You know, you guys know what I'm saying? This isn't gonna be a, a Queen Amidala thing from Phantom Menace, is it? Oh no. He revealed his true form. It differs far too greatly from the President Huang we knew. That is true. We were wondering why he, like, stayed so buff even in death. <laughs> it's as if they were two entirely different people. If there were, in fact, two Zengfa presidents, exactly how would such a scenario be possible? What would make the existence of the two presidents possible? Twin brother? Body double? The brother can't be right. I feel like we would have heard something. Mm. It's either this or this. It's definitely not the third one. Shoot. It can't be a twin brother because they still wouldn't be that different if they were. I'm going to say body double then. And if it's wrong, then we know it's the twin brother. If we were to assume that one of them was a body double, wouldn't it be possible then? A body double? Is that right then? We didn't really get any indication that it was. President Huang possessed immense power and authority in Zengfa. I'm sure that there were those who envied his position and made attempts on his life. Yes, just as he was attacked a few days ago at Gord Lake. It's true. There were those who sought Huang's life from time to time. Imagine that we met the president actually a few days ago, but for me, it's been months, so I couldn't remember. But I can't easily believe that there were two presidents, at least not without any evidence. Do I have evidence that proves that there were two presidents? Shit, I don't know. <sighs> um, what did... <sighs> Where's the case files again? Twelve years ago, the president was kidnapped and a witness was killed. Did this say anything? Dai Long Lang confirmed that on the evening of the incident, the president was at the Zengfa embassy until midnight. Present at an apartment. Take photo. <gasps> oh! I get it. I, I think I know what I have to do. Okay, this is it. Has Agent Lang not noticed this contradiction? Or has he noticed it but can't admit it? What is it, Mr. Prosecutor? Don't shout something out only to suddenly clam up. According to the recording on the doll, the president visited the orphanage at midnight. However, that should not have been possible, because he was still at the embassy at midnight. Huh? Why is that? Why? Because at the time, the president should have been at the embassy. He was together with Agent Lang's father. Right, he couldn't be there at two places at once, or could he? So, Agent Lang, you really did notice. He was in two places at the same time, ergo, there must have been two presidents. Oh, I don't know. Then, which of the two was the real president that on, <laughs> on that day 12 years ago? Sorry, that was a weird statement to read. Most likely the one who died. Who? 
Who, who contracted Dojin to murder Huang? In order to learn that, first, we must have a look at the evidence that we proved was false earlier. And the piece of evidence we know to be false is the photo. The photo is wrong. This right here. We, we marked this out to be fake, so that's got to be it. The photo taken with Cameron's camera was taken after he was murdered. And he was murdered because he witnessed the presidential assassination. In other words, the photo must have been taken following the assassination. Given that, who is the president pictured in the fake photo? So they had someone step up. We must consider him to be the body double. So the president was dead by the time the photo was taken. Who's that then? This is unreal. In other words, the body double had the real president murdered and then took his place? Patricia Rowland and Blaze must have cooperated in that plan. Wait a minute, though. Hold it. Huang's body was never found. Just where could it have disappeared to? The answer to that is already quite apparent. The person's still alive. This is where the real president's body was. You know what I'm thinking? Oh, where is it? Murder photo, crime scene notes. Are we are we are we thinking that the real president died in this accident? No, wait, what am I even talking about? That's why Blaze was digging it up. Did they bury him? I I had a brief lapse of judgment where I'm like, oh, the person that was killed here was the real president. That's a Is that why they were digging? Wait a minute. Last night there was something Blaze had to unearth with his own two hands. That item was not the ransom. It was something far more important. Ah! So Blaze unburied the... The real president's body. The possibility is quite high. What did you say? The bones from the body buried 12 years ago would have still remained. According to Mr. Powers, construction was to begin soon at this lot. That was the deadline. Both for the movie and the retrieval of the body. Because they would have found the body when they started the construction. Agent Lang, let us search the footprints that Blaze dug up. Yeah. If the body was buried there, there'd be traces of it. Hey, someone call forensics. Holy shit, I can't believe this. Dude. I have the results of the search. We have found traces in the dirt that suggest a body was buried here. Oh my god. So it was Huang after all. We also recovered the skeletal remains that Blaze the Best dug up. They were in his home. They were in his house? Ew! In addition to the bone structure, the dental records, and the bone fractures all match up. We can confirm that it was indeed President Huang. Oh my god. So this so the double was killed today. Instead, the double was killed by the Mozilla head, whoever it was. So the real President Huang was indeed killed 12 years ago. The SS5 incident was a murder, and they covered it up as a kidnapping. Concrete is broken and the ground beneath them is exposed, dug by Blaze to retrieve the body. Okay. This is insane. So the SS5 incident was actually a murder incident. But there's so much information, it's way too confusing. Indeed. Let us take this opportunity to review the details of the case. First, the real president came to the orphanage, right? Okay. Twelve years ago, the true President Huang visited the orphanage in order to meet his son. There he is. The footsteps in the snow that we thought belonged to Mr. Cameron were most likely made by the president at the time. Right, okay, that's set. President Huang was supposed to meet his son here. However, the one who actually showed up was the assassin, Siren Dojin. He came here to meet his son, but was murdered instead? How horrible! A man like Dojin shows no mercy. And after that, the second tragedy occurred. You mean Mr. Cameron's murder? Indeed. 
Mr. Cameron saw the decisive moment. After the real president was killed by Dojin. Right, two killers there. They worked in tandem. His body was carried to the rear courtyard by the team of kidnappers. Mr. Cameron must have witnessed that moment from the orphanage entrance. That would make more sense that he was there on the street and not in the orphanage itself. Though he himself believed that he had actually witnessed a kidnapping. Furthermore, by this time, Body Double, who had come to meet up with Blaze and Miss Rowland, was already standing behind Mr. Cameron, and he killed him. And then the witness to the incident, Mr. Cameron, was killed by the Body Double. So, was Mr. Cameron's corpse also carried by the Body Double? Yes, that seems likely. Yeah, okay, well that makes sense now, his big beefy dude could have done it. But, there wasn't anything at the crime scene that looked like the Body Double's footprints. <laughs> I've already figured out how he accomplished that. There is a piece of evidence that would made it possible. <gasps> Wait, we have shoes! We have the victim's shoes! What did the body double use to move the body without leaving any footprints? We have that. It's right here. Didn't belong to Cameron. Copley like replaced the shoes on the victim's feet after he died. Dude. Oh my god, it's becoming clear. This is almost certainly how the body double carried Mr. Cameron's corpse. So it made it look like his own footprints. After Mr. Cameron was killed, the president's body double carried him into the middle of the garden. I suspect the body double was wearing the same shoes as the real president at the time. If he made sure to step precisely on top of the footprints left by the real president. Ah! Uh, since the shoes were the same! There would only be one set of footprints left behind in the snow. I think I've got a pretty good grasp on the SS5 incident now. But there's still one thing I don't get. What's that? Why did they need to stage the abduction? Because Mr. Cameron witnessed the incident. He saw the president at the orphanage. He left behind witness testimony on Miss Crane's answering machine. Right, if he didn't leave that message, they didn't have to do anything. Even Blaze couldn't make that disappear. Ergo, the body double needed a reason for the president to have been at the orphanage. And that's why they prepared the fake kidnapping charade. The people in the fake photo are the body double and most likely Patricia Rowland. The person in the coat is Miss Rowland? What makes you say that? The two would have had to leave the orphanage in order to take the picture. Just like when he moved the body, the double used the real president's footprints. And she used hers on the other side, the smaller ones. Yeah. Uh, so the second set of footprints must belong to the person in the coat. Indeed. We originally believed that those footprints belonged to Cameron's killer. They were size 7, too small for Blaze's feet. Thus we can presume that the person playing the part of the kidnapper was Patricia Rowland. Hidden in the shadows of the presidential kidnapping was a presidential assassination. Wow we I see. So that's why my old man... Why he what? The old man must have realized that a murder had taken place. After all, he had the kids drawing. However, that picture was never presented as evidence. Your father likely took it from the young witness during the investigation and hid it. He had to have known that Huang was dead. But what if he had revealed that back then? Revealed the death of the president, the backbone of Zengfa. It would have caused chaos. Right, I could see why he didn't, maybe. And that's why my old man took the secret to the grave. He even took the blame for the kidnapping, knowing that that would be the fall of the House of Ling. All right, he sacrificed it all. So this is the truth that Agent Lang's father hid 12 years ago. And now it's all become clear. So the from, oh my god, so from all the time until now, it's been a double. So this has been updated now, okay. Holy shit. Who's this? Is that really the case, I wonder? Who the hell is this? Huh? What? Who's there? Ring? What was that noise? <gasps> that bell. It's... Uh, sir? Sir. You just show up here walking around in a jail outfit? 
thinking that that's inconspicuous? Okay. You're here. Serendogen. Oh, well, your papa was here too, I'm glad. You. Why are you here? How can you just brazenly show up here? Who do you think you are, pal? <laughs> I found the conversation most intriguing and I just... Well... <laughs> are you feeling nostalgic about an old murder of yours? You're the one who killed Huang? <laughs> Nostalgia? I think not. You were speaking about the person I'm searching for. You're searching for someone? I escaped from prison in order to meet with a young acolyte. The one who wore the red raincoat. It is, it is connected then. Your, he's your little pupil, is he? The red raincoat. What? Who is this person? I suspect that it's the same person as the mastermind you are searching for. Oh god, it's Junko. <laughs> Great. Just who I want to see. Someone you've been searching for, the one in the red hood. Okay, so that might have that might have been. Yeah, okay, so it's whoever this is. But we still don't know who it is. Who's even left? Don't they seem surprised, Anubis? Yes, yes they are, my boy. Twelve years ago, this young acolyte saved my life. Really? Wait, wait, what? How long is this? I, I, I don't want to stop now. How, how long is this? Okay, here's what I'm thinking. If it's not Serendosian behind all of this and he still says there's one more person, then this isn't the last testimony. Is it? I don't know. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna still- I'm gonna go for a little bit longer. Uh, uh, shit be damned. I just- just pray for the emulator. Certainly, it was I who killed President Huang. However, my life was also targeted on that day. The body double, Blaze, and Patricia all sought to seal my lips. Had I not been reunited with the young acolyte back then, I would have been in danger. But alas, even to this day, I do not know what has become of the young acolyte. So you're not in contact with whoever they are. Who the hell could it be? So your client was indeed the body double who was the main perpetrator of the crime. <laughs> it was a long time ago, but I remember his words even now. What is this? There have been countless attempts on my life, not just once or twice. Countless. And yet... Why must I be the one to face the danger? When I stand before the people, I garner the same respect as the president does. Tell me, just what is the difference between him and me? When I stand in front of the people, who the hell could that be? The difference was great, while the voice and style of speech may be the same. <laughs> one can mimic the body, but the heart cannot be reproduced. Oh, he w oh, he's- whoever this body double is, he was a little bit upset that he wasn't emulating the president perfectly, maybe. I suppose his own weakness has cost him his quest to become a leader. Now the Rook's gone, I'm in charge! I'm not sure if you're as capable as Rook was. Wh what are you saying? I'm totally the leader now! Tch. Perhaps the king and his knight were not so different after all. The double believed that the president's only weakness was a woman called Amy. To find the woman, he needed the assistance of someone from this country. So he joined forces with Blaze. After determining her whereabouts, he simply waited for the right opportunity. That chance came with the meeting at the orphanage. Indeed, the director of the orphanage was bribed and brought in as an accomplice. He must be referring to Patricia Rowland. Okay, so she was bribed. Well, given what I've told you, do you realize the whereabouts of the young acolyte now? No, I still don't even know who it is. You mean the boy who saved you, but how do you know that he is the mastermind? Oh no, I'm starting to get Kokichi flashbacks, I swear to fuck. That day, the young one caused a fire at the garden of the orphanage. Oh, it was him! It was the boy at the orphanage who caused the fire? You're talking about the kid who started the fire as a prank! A prank? <laughs> Not at all. 
On that night 12 years ago, the young acolyte was hiding inside the igloo. In there. It seems he witnessed Patricia and Blaze moving the body from his hiding place. Right? Apparently he heard them talking during that time. It would seem that they were planning to kill me because I knew the truth. He immediately came to the main hall to tell me. I learned this about the young acolyte sometime later. It seems he was wearing a red raincoat at the time. Who in the hell? He led me out of the main hall. So he helped him get away. And then the young acolyte said he was going to get rid of our footprints. Oh, that's why he set the fire. So he scattered some lamp oil near the igloo over the snow. Then he boldly set the oil ablaze. That's fine. It's, you know, no psychopath in the works or anything. Just setting fire to stuff. No way! He set the fire in order to... Oh, their focus was diverted towards the burning flames. So they, so Dojin was able to get away. I took the opportunity to escape through the rear exit. Oh, that sounds lewd. So the boy in the red raincoat is the mastermind behind the case? Exactly. Isn't that right, Anubis? Yes, boy. Yes, it is. What in the hell? Oh my god, this is going to be a long episode. This is going to be a long episode, isn't it? Certainly it was I who killed President Huang. Okay. Well, certainly it was. You admitted that rather easily. These days I have long grown tired of killing. <laughs> you sure about that? But in those halcyon days, I devoted myself to the path of an executioner. If one cannot admit that much, what can he admit? Right, Anubis? Yes, yes, my boy. I feel like he's saying something scary, but it's kind of hard to understand him. This fallen priest is saying he has no feelings about the president's death. Dojin the assassin and escaped prisoner. He should be a despicable opponent, but... Silencing him now would be imprudent. I must keep my composure and let him talk. I understand your point. You killed the president. That is correct. The aim of my blade never misses its mark. Okay. However, my life was also targeted on that day. Right, because they said they were going to kill him after, because he knew. Your life was targeted. You, the assassin. The hunter becomes the hunted. The Buddhist becomes the Buddha. Okay, you don't have to make up strange proverbs. Life is transient, especially for an assassin whose life is always exposed to danger. So, does that mean people you've tried to kill have fought back? That is a rare occurrence. However, this was different. The body double Blaze and Patricia all sought to seal my lips. Right. Sirendojin, you are a master assassin. As such, could you not have evaded attack from those three and fled the scene? <laughs> you greatly overestimate me. Without Anubis by my side, I would not even have been able to walk about. Remember, he's like, he's blind. If those three were to attack me all at once, I would not stand a chance. I see. So even an assassin will fail to superior numbers in a frontal assault. I suppose one could say that. I, Sir Indosian, would have suffered a shameful defeat. Had I not been reunited with the young acolyte back then, I would have been in danger. All I need to hear about that part. Reunited. So when did you first meet with him? Yeah, so he's saying that he's met him once before. That would be 18 years ago, on the 24th of December. That is a rather long time ago. On that day, our roles were reversed. I saved the young one's life. Did you? There was an unusual snowstorm on that day. The temperature was well below freezing. I took Anubis for a walk in the snow. That's when Anubis noticed something and started running. I followed after him and found a car. I had great difficulty opening the door. It had frozen shut. Oh no! Oh my gosh! 
In the back seat, there were two young children shivering from the cold. Oh my goodness, look at this! Two children. Had they remained in the car for an hour longer, they surely would have frozen to death. That's terrible. I brought the two of them to a nearby orphanage. That was nice of him. Is there anything about Dojin's story that concerns me? Hmm. Usually when they put these up, that means you should say something, but okay, yes? What concerns me is the number of children, the model of the car. It can't be either of these. Why would the number of children or the model of the car? Well, I guess the number of children because we're only talking about one child. But then there's the date, too. Wait a minute. Hang the hell on. What did he say? 18 years ago? Hang on. 18 years ago? Am I thinking, am I thinking wrong? I don't even know if I have it anymore, so I might be. Shut. Up. Remember this? Remember anything in here? <laughs> 18 years ago. Look what happened here. There are no clues to the whereabouts of Dover's son or Gustavia's son. Oh my. Stop it. That can't be related. I'm going to say the date. Because the number of children that were lost were two. The 24th of December, 18 years ago. Are you sure about that? There is no mistake. Could that mean? I know. The significance behind the date. I, I, are, you, are they really bringing everything together right now? What shows the significance of the date when Dojin found the children? Well, it's just what we just looked at. I, I'm, I'm speechless right now. Wait, not that. Went the wrong way. Darn it. I always do this. I was going the wrong way. Now I gotta scroll through all of it because I don't know where it is again. It's over here, isn't it? Uh, yeah, here. Okay. Oh, man. Take that. Is it really this? That day, a certain incident occurred. A sculptor was murdered. Uh. During that incident, two young boys went missing. I cannot believe that... That's them. I didn't even remember the picture. And it looked just like them. The sons of the victim, Isaac Dover, and the culprit, Dan Gustavia. We never did find out where those two boys went after the case 18 years ago. They were never found. Oh, they were the sons of a victim and a culprit. It all makes sense. What makes sense? One of the youths was bound so that he could not move. Mr. Dover did it so that Mr. Gustavia's son couldn't come to the contest venue. Indeed. Gustavia was using his own son as a taste tester. <laughs> to think that was what transpired. Neither child seemed to recall what had happened. They lost their memories. The acolyte told me this when we were reunited 12 years ago. The pair were placed in an extreme situation on the verge of freezing to death. That trauma led them both to suffer from amnesia. Neither could so much as remember his own name. So, they didn't even know that they were the sons of Mr. Dover and Mr. Gustavia? Indeed. While we cannot say it conclusively, the probability is quite high. However, we still don't have enough information to deduce the mastermind's identity. So it's one of those kids, is it? Dojin, would you please continue your story? <laughs> Very well. All right, here we go. Dojin and the Acolyte. I continued my correspondence with the young Acolyte even after entering prison. Recently, that has all come to a abrupt halt, however. It left me quite concerned. I'm gonna tell you what I think already. Between the body double nonsense and the person knowing Siren, the person that we must be talking about, I thought was Knightley. They're the only ones that have a connection to both the president and him. But Knightley's dead. So I'm a little bit confused about this timeline. Unless I'm thinking completely wrong. 
Furthermore, those involved in the crime 12 years ago were all drawn into the incidents one by one. I grew more and more curious, and so I absconded briefly from the prison. Wait a minute now. Those involved 12 years ago were Patricia Rowland, Blaze de Best, and President Wong's body double. And Miss Rowland was the warden of Mr. Dojin's prison. <laughs> I blackmailed the warden. That woman had tried to kill me. Perhaps the good prosecutor has already deduced the reason. It obviously makes sense now. You murdered President Huang, however, the world still believed he was alive. If you were able to prove that the president was a fake, both Patricia Rowland and Blaze DeBest would have been in danger. That is correct, and I had heard the proof with my own ears. I'll be waiting in the courtyard of the orphanage at midnight on February 9th. Even if it's just once, I want John to be able to meet you. I'm sorry if I'm being selfish, but I'll be waiting. There they are. Who am I, Jubri? My apologies, but I am presently waiting for someone. <laughs> I am well aware of that, President Huang. Are you not meeting with your son? However, I do not spill blood needlessly. You may relax. I seek only the president's life. It can't... Oh, oh, oops. It can't be. Please wait. I am just about to meet my son for the first time. I am sure this will be the first and the last time. Please, at least let me wait until we are finished. I had thought the president would beg for his life, but he was of a different sort. Officially, the president had no son. However, he shook his head and said, This illegitimate son was his, and he intended to recognize him publicly. Furthermore, he claimed that he had already made preparations towards that end. Would that son of his be the boy with horns over there by any chance? Boy? With the horns? Wait, you can see John's horns? <laughs> There is no need to see them. From the moment I escaped from prison until now, I have been closely lending an ear to your voices. He said that the president made preparations towards recognizing his son. But the word preparations alone would be insufficient for blackmail. That's it! There is one thing that could prove Huang's words, the will held by the Hassel Lang. It was also proof of his trust in us. His son's existence would have been revealed to the world. The name on the recording, the mention of preparations, and the will in Zengfa. <laughs> Together they suffice to make the warden bow to my- Yeah, I could see that. With those three pieces of information, one could prove the identity of the double. By using John. Okay. The president blocked the first strike of my knife with something soft. As pieces of it fell atop the snow, I struck once more. This time, the blow proved fatal. Maybe we shouldn't say this in front of his son right now. So Dojin cut off the Muzilla's doll horn. Of course. None but I heard his final words. Only myself and that child knew of the president's secret son. Right, whoever the kid was that saved him. Dojin and the Accolade. Oh my god, this is gonna be the longest episode ever. I'm so sorry. I continue my correspondence with the young acolyte even after entering prison, so he must be- he must mean nightly, though. No? In other words, you contacted him from prison. <laughs> that is correct. A post office box was used. A post office box? It would allow one to send and receive letters without revealing the recipient's location. I could not use a form of correspondence that would reveal the acolyte's location. There was someone keeping watch over my correspondences, after all, of course. He must mean the prison warden, Patricia Rowland. Could you be more specific about the nature of your correspondences? Well, they were mainly moves for my correspondence chess match. It has to be nightly! Correspondence chess? If I recall the person you were playing against... This might be hard to believe. The Dojin's chess opponent was... Are you saying he was playing against Mr. Knightley? Wasn't it Horace Knightley? We certainly found the correspondence chess memo in Knightley's cell. That's right. I... We have this back? 
This is now back in our inventory. This is insane! Does that mean Nightly Boy was the kid from the IS-7 incident? Could, could that really be true? Is there any evidence connecting Nightly to the IS-7 incident? To the IS-7 incident? Um... What do we still have? Sorry, I had a blip there. Oh, my, my emulator is probably gonna die. This is the worst idea I've ever had. If this video gets corrupted, I'm gonna cry. Here's the IS-7 documents. Can we check those real quick? Oh my god. Date of the event, it's the same date. Manfred von Karma, Gregory Edgeworth, Isaac Dover, Jeffrey Master. Felicia Scones, Catherine Hall, Dane Gustavia. What else do we have? Report on Knightley. I'm all but certain there's a connection between Knightley and Doge and Doge's chess partner. Interrogate him, thing to, laid to rest. I mean, there's this too. 12 years ago, I must retrieve it. Wait, 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 what about this too? Wait, what about the ring? Oh, wait, shit. This has got to be it. This was all that Knightley left behind. Could there be a clue hidden within? Which should I investigate? It's the ring, isn't it? Because the chessboard's just a chessboard. I don't think it has anything special in it. Because we already looked at it the last time for the weapon and such. This ring is... Mr. Edgeworth, what is it? Mr. Shields, look at this ring. Look at the symbol on it. I didn't even make that connection until just now. Oh my god. I thought so. He had Mr. Dover's seal turned into a ring. However, why would he have this? Shouldn't it have been held by the police as evidence from the IS-7 incident? After the incident, the seal was returned to the victim's next of kin. And Mr. Dover's only family was his son. But since no one knew where the son had gone to, it took a while to get it to him. I'd heard that the police had finally found him and delivered his inheritance, but... So the seal was thereby safely delivered to his son. And then he turned the seal into a ring and wore it on his purse. Oh my god! How has this all come full circle like this? A ring nightly made from his father's memento and I can't believe that's his father. Who would have thought that? So, Mr. Knightley was Mr. Dover's son? Police aren't fools. I'm sure they did a thorough check before handing over the seal. Well, if someone involved in the IS-7 incident was his chess opponent... Nightly, huh? Then that man must be the mastermind behind the... No, but he's dead. He's been dead. Objection. For a couple days, at least, according to this. But Nightly's dead. He cannot be involved in the incident. How about that? The only one who could be the mastermind was himself a murder victim. But... A dig that can't be the culprit. So there's no way that's right. It certainly is strange. In that case, who is the culprit? Who else is even left? Recently, all that has come to an abrupt halt, however. It left me quite concerned. God, I almost forgot we were in the middle of this. Oh, emulator, please hold on. I can't stop this. This is too good. It came to a halt. Now of all times? <laughs> quite odd, is it not? Anubis told me again and again how odd it was. That scary dog talked? Was he like, something's odd, woof? <laughs> I can understand Anubis's heart, even if he does not voice his thoughts. Uh, then there's something I'd like to ask, just in case. Your scary dog's staring at me right now. He's not saying, I'm hungry, I want some meat, right? <laughs> perhaps. But perhaps? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? Seems she's not much good with the assassin's dog. Good boy, good boy. There's a good boy. So then, at any rate, my correspondence with the acolytes suddenly came to an abrupt halt. Furthermore, those involved in the crime 12 years ago were all drawn into the incident. I'm... Something's weird here, and I can't tell what it is. That certainly does seem too much for mere coincidence. The body double of Dijon Huang, the president of Zhengfa, faked an assassination plot. 
Trisha Rowland, the prison warden, murdered Horace Knightley. And Blaise de Best, the chairman of the PIC, murdered Jill Crane. Come to think of it, as I've been investigating these cases, I have felt the presence of some force behind the scenes. Have you, Edgeworth? <laughs> Even within the prison, I could tell that this was no insignificant event. I grew more and more curious, and so I absconded briefly from the prison. What in the world? Okay. You absconded briefly from prison. I cannot forgive such a criminal act. You stole your way out of a prison? I can't forgive such a thieving act. <laughs> Relax, no one was hurt. I merely have connections that allow me to set foot outside. But even so, you can't just escape from prison, pal. Arrest him. Arrest him. That won't be necessary. Once my business is done, I shall return to my cell. You trying to make fools of us? A prison isn't the kind of place you can just enter and leave at will. <laughs> the wolf may say that. But one can see that the wolf and his pack also share an interest in the tales of my past. We kind of need him at this point, don't we? Agent Lang, Detective Gumshoe, there are still a few things I must ask Dojin. Please postpone matters until then. Yes, sir. I knew you'd say it, Mr. Edgeworth. Damn it all. But I'm not taking my eye off you for a second. Writing letters in Braille can be a rather enjoyable pastime. Writing letters in Braille... Huh? Wait a minute! Wait, what? Did I skip this part of the testimony before? I don't even remember him saying it. Wait a minute, we have something. Don't we? Writing letters in Braille can be a rather enjoyable pastime. Didn't we just get something? Is this, is this going to be related to the memo that we got that has the chest on it? Typed onto a word processor. Sent from Dojin to Knightley. Typed on a word processor. And what's what, where's the braille in this? What? Wait. Wait a minute. Where's the braille in this? Is it? Is he lying? Sir, you're blind. How did you type it? Is this why we got this just now? Is this why we got this just now? Sir. I'm certain you said you wrote your letters in Braille. Correct. The good prosecutor must know that I am lacking in sight, do you not? Yeah, that's what we thought. C bitch, you thought? The correspondence chess letter we found had been typed out using a word processor. What? That cannot be. What do you mean? So, someone went out of their way to retype the letter on a computer? Oh, so he's not lying. Did that get hijacked? Could another person have acted as a middleman between Dojin and Knightley? What do you mean? Dojin wrote his letters in Braille, however. By the time it reached Knightley, it had been rewritten on a word processor. We must assume that some middleman rewrote the letters. And the reverse can also be said. That same somebody might have taken the letters Knightley wrote and re-delivered them to Dojin. Huh? Yes, that is indeed true. Correspondence chess memo, the mastermind retyped Dojin's letters with word processor and sent them to Knightley. What? Knightley and Dojin both communicated through a certain individual. Who? Dojin, were the letters that reached you? They were in Braille, of course. Are we are we going with the with the assumption that Knightley doesn't know how to read or or anything in Braille, so he couldn't have sent it back that way? So Nile Boy's letters must have been transposed by that same person as well. So there was like some translator going on. Oh, then that somebody must be the mastermind behind the case. Wait, but who the hell could it be though? You're saying there's someone else who's the mastermind behind this case? It's Junko. At this rate, I'm ready. Though his son, Knightley, is already deceased. In that case, there is one more youth that we should consider to be the mastermind. Huh? You mean Dane Gustavia's son? Who the heck is he? 
If Nile is Dovis' son, then Gustavia's son must be. But we're the only friends either of us have had since childhood. He was the same as me. We never had real families. Huh? Who said this? Who's related to Knightley? Who was in that thing? Who was in that episode? <gasps> it can't be, it can't be, right? It can't be. Him? Mr. Edgeworth, what is it? You've gone all pale. I figured it out. It can't be him, guys. It can't be him. The identity of the mastermind who's been controlling this case since him? You guys are shitting me, right? It can't be him. What? Who in the world is it? I don't want to believe it myself. But it is someone we know quite well. I loved well. Do we really? Have we really wanted to talk to this person? Because I haven't. Wait a minute. Are you fucking serious? Is this game actually going to turn this on me now? I called this as a joke. I said, oh shit, it could be anybody at this point. It could be Regina, it could be Simon, but it's not, because they're done with... Simon was the one that brought all that shit to Knightley. Simon was the one who said they were friends. Shut up. Not you. Not you. I clicked on the wrong thing. It's not him. This moron? How the hell could it be? The mastermind behind this case? Th they better have some fucking explaining here. Sent a letter to Jill Crane, which deceived Blaze. Furthermore, he kidnapped John and eavesdropped on us. However, all of his actions, the one I have not been able to get out of my mind. is how he brought an unconscious K to the roof. The giant monster. Huh? Did you just say something? That's right. The key to exposing the mastermind is in the monster's true form. Ah! I almost forgot. Uh, if you'd like, uh, please come to our next show. Uh, I'll also be performing in it. The, the Barry Big Circus is always fabulous and fun for all ages. No freaking way. Miss Swift, there is something I would like to ask of you. <laughs> what? What do you mean, me? You said that she recorded the sound of Mozilla spewing flames. Would this decisive evidence of yours be something you recorded on that tape recorder? That's Mr. Edge with Foria. You. You're good at figuring things out, ain't you? It's the sound of Mozilla spewing out fire. This place nearly became a sea of flames. That's right. I ain't actually seen it with my own eyes, though. Could you let us listen to the tape? Well, sure thing. Well, there we go. The sound, it's as I thought. So, it seems that my reasoning was correct. The true nature of the monster and the mastermind. All of my logic is coming together. I, I gotta stop this! I gotta stop this episode! Miss Hart, you said that you captured a giant eye on film, did you not? Sure did! Right here in this photo! Though we can't con- oh, though we can't confirm it like this. Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir! Lend us your film analysis device. Okay, but uh, what do you want to analyze, sir? Oh no, that's gonna be a screenshot. <laughs> This photo, please. I'm on it. Right, because this brought up the other stuff before. Is there a new clue in this photo? Uh, well, we want to look at the window, don't we? Oh, look at that. Look at that giant eyeball. Uh. I mean, do I just present the whole damn thing? Because, I mean, it's all there. Th this is... See? Ain't the Mozilla's eye right where I said it would be? <laughs> I see. I have finally grasped. Oh! <laughs> well, excuse me? The true form of the giant monster that was being controlled by the mastermind. 
Oh, here we freaking go. Good, 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 good. Giant monster. What in the hell's happening? Are you admitting it? You are, ain't you? You're admitting that the Madame Mozilla is real. Ma'am, I am doing nothing of the sort. No, this is not Mozilla. This is the eye of a different monster. Look at this thing. It's a flyer for the very big circus. Ah, this is... Precisely. There's a rather large balloon with the head of a lion pictured here. There it is. This balloon is the true identity of the giant monster. In addition, the sound Miss Swift recorded, which she believes to be Mozilla spewing flames. The ring of fire, was it? Well, Mr. Prosecutor, don't tell me. You're gonna say something that'll shatter my dreams of a scoo. Hot air balloons fly by using burners to heat the air, right, sir? Oh, yeah, okay, never mind. <laughs> that. Precisely. The mastermind used this monster of his. Ew, and that's how he got on top of the tower, isn't it? To bring Kay to the rooftop of the Grand Tower without using the elevator. Well, wouldn't that mean that the mastermind is someone connected to the circus? He's a member of the circus. Knightley's friend and <clears throat> Dan Gustavia's son. Who'd have thunk it? Not me! An apprentice beast tamer. <laughs> He's no amateur. It was all a ruse, was it? Is it really all a hoax? He's different than that, isn't he? It's not his real persona. Well, the beast he has tamed is none other than this entire case. Simon Keyes. He's the mastermind behind the... I... You could not have paid me any money to believe this. No way in hell. Mr. Keyes was really behind it all? No way! I don't believe it. I, I mean, we trusted him. How could it all have been a lie? That's just heartbreaking. We did take care of him. Like, he was so vulnerable and awkward. It's always like that, though, isn't it, with these games? What is it? Hey, you, stop! Where do you think you're going? <laughs> the boy with horns is rather perceptive. The good prosecutor has done a remarkable job. Now that I have heard that, I have no further business here. What? Wait! Dojin! Oh, his dog gonna bite you. Oh my god, he got bit right in the face. No, Anubis, don't do that! Damn it, where'd he vanish to? Mr. Edgeworth, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. However... That guy... John? That Dojin guy. He's the one who killed my dad, right? There's no question more difficult to answer, however... There's no use in denying the truth. Yes, John. You are correct. He'll pay for this. I swear he's gonna pay! I... I I'll make him pay myself! Stop him, Courtney. That's not the road he wants to go down. John, you mustn't finish that thought. Prosecutor Edgeworth, please pay us no mind. Sir, I put out an APD on Dojin. All available police units will be searching for him. You heard the man, kid. I don't mean to be heartless, but we need to hurry, too. So, Mr. Prosecutor, where's the mastermind right now? Agent Lang is right. Our top priority right now should be catching the mastermind. He said that he would be practicing. He's most likely at the Barry Big Circus tent. But first, Agent Lang, I have a request. A request? What is it? Now that we've identified the giant monster, our next order of business is to capture it. The moment we arrive at the tent, I need you to locate that specific item post-haste. And Detective, I ask that you perform a follow-up investigation on the kidnapping incident. Roger that, sir. Mr. Edgeworth, I want to help out too. Hmm. In that case, you'll be in charge of calling for backup. If he is truly the mastermind, we may require assistance from a certain someone. Oh, I bet I know who. I met him so many times, yes, his facade always fooled me into sympathy. I know! That's why I'm pissed! He may have got the better of me in the past, but this time I'll settle it once and for all. I... <laughs> what? What? So the next episode's the last. I think. Um, I'll, I'll try to make it as long as this one, and hopefully that will be it. I... <sighs> I can't believe this. I, I 
can't believe this. This is incredible. Guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I'm sorry it was a long episode. I hope you enjoyed. I know sometimes you guys asked for them, so here it is. Um, thank you so much for watching it all the way to the end, and I hope to see you in the next one. Toodaloo!